What's going on everybody? Welcome to another video and this is going to be a quick video on fish care. Uh, it's really important. We need to take care of our resources, especially us tournament fishermen. And when we lose fish or fish die on us, you know, that hurts the lake in the future and, you know, with the reproductive and the spawns and everything. And once the waters get above 75 degrees, the mortality rate is significantly high. So, what we as tournament anglers can do to help protect those fish and help keep them from, you know, passing away on us is to implement proper fish care. And today I'm going to show you guys how I take care of fish and uh, especially how I took care of fish in this last BFL. Uh, you guys haven't seen it yet. It's the Washburn BFL. It's a Tennessee River Lake. Uh, in June so you know we majority of people caught their fish deep including myself and like I said it's hot out you know the water's above 75 degrees I think it's water's like 82 or 83 degrees right now so it's really really warm it's warm just about everywhere in the country besides way up north so we're gonna dive into proper fish care and ways you guys can save money alright guys first thing is first you want a good live well system you want recirculating pumps and you also want a oxygenator those two things are what really really help out is that way you can keep the water circulating you can keep the water oxygenated and the longer that water sits in there and the more the fish are in there and the more fish you catch the more co2 gets in the water so and it pretty much ends up suffocating them as bad as that sounds so you want to have a good recirculating system and a good oxygenator and also you want the g juice g juice helps calm them down it helps uh eliminate the uh co2 in the water and also helps them uh, keep their slime on their body which is very important because that, that is one of their uh, immune systems so G juice is important and also with G juice you want to incorporate some sort of ice uh, you could use ice blocks like this which will actually help you one save money and two you can actually throw five or six of them in there get the water real nice and chilled get down there around that mid 60 mark low 70 mark and you can also have some in your cooler on your boat that way you can swap them out midday uh, if you do not run ice packs uh, which you can only downside about ice packs is that when you run down the lake and everything they'll beat and bang on your live well and they could possibly depend on how well your live well is made uh, you know cause cracks in your live well or hit your fish and knock them out or whatever the good old fashioned ice 20 pounds of ice does wonders but with ice they also have chlorine in the ice for when they you know make the ice so g juice or some sort of uh, live well treatment will help eliminate the chlorine and help your fish survive longer so those are the first two ice and g juice very very important i don't ever leave especially when the water's above 75 i don't ever leave the house without ice and g juice the second part is more for deep fishing even if i'm shallow fishing i'm putting ice and g juice in my live well yes those fish are living less than five foot but still it just helps them calm down reduces stress and everything and now the other part are fish clips uh it's just a little weight with a clip on it uh, i actually make my own because it's a whole lot cheaper and also the alligator clips they tend to rust if you don't take care of them properly um i typically make my own uh, it's just three simple things. You can order a, a pack of alligator clips off Amazon, super cheap. I think I ordered mine for like three bucks. Uh, weighted line, which you should have laying around in the garage somewhere. It's also super cheap, it's like three or four bucks to buy. It. And egg sinkers. The, that's one of the most important things, obviously, to help keep the fish upright. You're using fin clips to help keep them upright so they can alleviate when you're catching them deep. Um, you know, that way they can relieve their air bladder and everything naturally which is the biggest key because once you start poking them with a needle which is the next thing is a big 18 gauge needle to help relieve that which this is a last ditch effort for me i like for those fish to relieve it themselves because more natural less chance of bacteria with the needle and everything and uh, again three quarter one ounce weights on them and i'm actually going to show you guys how to make one really really quick i have a weeder line right here I have uh, leftover alligator clips I bought three years ago, and I still have plenty of them left. You just gotta make sure you take care of them properly. 
of course weights and some pliers so what we're going to do is we're going to pull out about three to four inches of uh with your line here you're going to cut that and then make sure it's kind of rounded you know so your so your weeder line can go through your egg sinker then i'm going to take my alligator clip and my weeder line run it through i don't know if you guys can see that or not you run it through where you can actually clamp it on with your needle nose and now once you have your weeder line on your alligator clip you're going to take your egg sinker again three quarter one ounce works best and you're going to get a lighter all you're going to do is melt the end and then i like using a tackle box whatever you would like to use you're going to melt the end and then mushroom the end that way the egg sinker will not come off and just melt the end and the egg sinker will not come off and lastly like i mentioned before last ditch effort is a needle i think it's 18 gauge not 100 percent sure on that but this is last ditch effort this is well, i use this after i weigh my fish in especially if i catch my fish early and they're not relieving themselves with you know their air bladder and everything this right here is last ditch effort i don't like using this because it can you know cause bacteria get them get the fish infected or you could actually if you don't know what you're doing you could actually kill the fish and as bad as that sound and one more thing guys is about a gut hooked fish or a fish you hook in the gill or tongue or just a fish that's bleeding in general uh, i know there's a lot of myths going around about you know mountain dew or something something like that uh, a fish is designed biologically that once they get in the water it helps clot so the faster you can get that fish unhooked uh, if you can go through the gills turn the hook and pop the gill pop the hook out of the, you know the throat or something like that if it's tongue hooked that is really it's really really painful for the fish and i you know sometimes i've had them i've had them survive and i've had them not survive so uh, I actually caught one fish in the BFL on South Holston. It was hooked in the tongue and that fish survived. But just be careful if you can get the hook out, get it. If you can't, just cut the line and that's really about it. But that's all I have for you guys. A really quick video on how to properly take care of your fish. Uh, just do a quick rundown on how I do it real fast again. Once the water is over 75, I do not leave the house without ice and G juice and you want to implement that soon as you possibly can uh, preferably before you catch your first fish and secondly if you're deep fishing especially once the water gets over 75 degrees just about everywhere in the country you can catch them deep um, you want to implement the belly weights uh, you know the fin clips you it, all you do is you take these you hook them on their pectoral fins and it keeps the fish upright that way they can relieve their air bladder naturally and by themselves and the last ditch effort is the needle um, this is helpful for the fish but it also can bring bacteria into the fish and if you don't know what you're doing you could possibly kill the fish and a quick recap on uh, like a bad hooked fish gut hooked fish tongue hooked fish or anything like that if you can remove the hook cleanly do it if not cut the line and get the fish in the water as quickly as possible because fish are designed biologically to clot blood especially easily you're in water that's all i have for you guys i hope you guys enjoyed the video if you found something useful be sure to subscribe like follow me on all my social medias and until next time catch them big